So um, I hope everyone here has seen Wolf Walkers uh, already. It'll make a lot more sense if you have. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, and then after we show the, the videos of how to draw the characters and the, and the environment, we'll come back and we'll have questions and answers. So if you have any questions about the film or about drawing the characters or anything, you can post them into us then. We try to do a little bit of animation as well, to just do a little bit of a, a blink on the wolf, so that would be fun. So get your art materials ready, and it would be great if you could do a bit of drawing with us. Okay, so uh, we're going to do one of the wolves of the film. Um, you see that Maeve is always surrounded by that big pack of wolves, and sometimes they merge together and they form this big mass and it's, it's really really cool so um, for that we're going to use uh, you can use a pencil um, because what we're going to do is we're going to try to to make uh, make the line a bit rough the, w the same way that's in the film so uh, the way you start is what we call a construction drawing which is um, to give us a guideline of uh, where he's going to be so first uh, we start with a uh, with a circle around here, which is it gives us idea of where the head's going to be positioned. Now it's not have it doesn't have to be um, very precise. You have you can draw very loosely. Now uh, from this circle, we kind of come in with a little um, uh, half moon shape above it, and on the front of it, a little square like this, and that is going to be the shape of the wolf's head. And on top here, we're going to have uh, the ears. So you see, it's very all very loose for the moment. And then we're going to draw a bit, um, uh, drawing the details later. Uh, f and then for the body, we let's make a bit of an, uh, an angry um, pose. So we can have a, a, an arch shape here for his back. If you just draw a big arch here. And next to the head here, we're going to draw a bigger circle that's for his chest. And a smaller circle here at the end of the arch, that's going to be his hips. So that's our basic uh, shape of the body of the wolf going over here. Now uh, we go back to the head just to, to finish it off now. Um, here uh, towards the this part here is going to be his snout. See, he's kind of looking into us. So we can make it your, your stronger line here. Uh, here at the bottom, we make a kind of a triangle shape for his nose. And we can fill that in black. We're going to do here the, the shape of the head. And we're going to add some hairs over here. Some hairs over here, and then we can connect this shape to the snout. And here now, around the middle, we're gonna get that that um, nice shape connecting the head to the snout like this, and on the other side, coming down all the way to the nose. And then each side of it is going to be the eyes. And let's give him a little line underneath the eyes. And the, the pupils inside. Now it already starts to look a bit more like a, like a wolf face. Let's work on the ears now again. Uh, in, around the middle of the ears we do a separation here. And the top part of the triangle will be the outside of the ear. So we, we put some, add some little hairs here. And the same on the other side. And on the top, a few little hairs. Now we can go to, uh, we have the, the face done. We can work on the body now. Um, let's give him some, uh, do you know when uh, cats and dogs, they have the, the hairs sticking up on the top of their backs, so we try to give him that. It's going to look cool. So here on top of, of his, uh, his back, let's give him some, some hairs sticking up. So 
you know, like this. We just follow that line, adding some, some hairs all the way up to here. And then from here on, we just continue, continue the line. And then we can add some extra hairs around here to make it a bit rough. Oh, cool. Now, for the bottom of the drawing, we're going to first connect the circles here and then close the shape and then close the shape here with a straight line. And from here, we're going to add the, the paw coming out the back. So for the paw, we're going to do um, this sort of shape. If you look at uh, dogs, To look at dogs, their paws go, their legs go like this, and then like this, and here will be the little foot. So it's, it goes back and then forward. So let's do this here. Shape going back, and shape going back here. And then just a straight line coming down. And on this side, let's do a nice curve coming down. And here at the bottom, we can close with the little paw, give him some toes. There you go. And then we can close off the shape here. Now the front one, let's do, just do it coming forward like this. Just a big straight line coming down here. And a little bit of a curved line coming down here. So that's your paw. Close it here, give him some toes. There you go. And you can make it come up like this. Now we have to do the back paws as well. Uh, here in the front, you can do just another one just like this here. You see I'm being a bit rough with my line, so it looks a bit angry. Uh, giving the toes here again. And for the back one, let's make like he's just about to start walking. So curve, curve, and then to the other side here. Coming straight, and you just have to close here his little paw and give him some toes. There you go. Now it's still missing something, right? It's missing his tail. So let's put that in. So you see that we have this really nice curve coming up the back and down here. So you just continue the same shape and then coming up to do the tail. So continue this line down here and up. And at the bottom, we give some hairs like that. So basically, that's your wolf shape done. We just have to add some hairs now to make it nice, to make it a bit more rough and a bit more uh, scary. So here at the bottom of the tail, we can add, add some hairs here. And around here as well, around his back, you get some hairs too. So you do some V shapes and some some little strokes like that very quickly with your pencil. And there you have it, one of the, one of the wolves from the forest. All right, so what we can try to do now is uh, to do a little bit of animation on this, just so you can see how you, we do like a very simple one, so you can see how you could do your own animations at home. Well, basically what animation is, is we do one drawing and then you do another drawing where the character moves a little bit and moves a little bit more and a little bit more and each drawing it moves a little bit. So what we are going to do here is we're going to get another paper and put on top of it of your previous one. Now I'm going to use, um, if you can see this is an animation paper, it's got these holes underneath. That is so we can use um, a bar like this that has this uh, these pegs 
and I'm going to stick it here to put into place. Now I'm going to use this just to show you guys how, um, how it works, but what you can do at home is just have the papers on top of each other or have a little paper clip uh, holding the two pieces of paper together. But what this pack does is that I can have my original drawing here and I can have a new piece of paper on the top and they are basically stuck together and they're not going to move. They'll be in the same position. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to trace the same drawing again, but this time we're going to make the eyes closed. So when you flip between the two drawings, your wolf is going to be blinking. So I'm going to just, just do the, go ahead and just do the head uh, so we can see it happen. But you can do the whole body when you have time. So let's trace. Uh, if you can't really see your drawing underneath the paper, you can hold it against a window as well. Uh, it should be easier. Uh, so go ahead and trace the whole head, uh, but leave the eyes out. Don't do the eyes yet. So let's do this. Let's start with this. I'm just copying the drawing that's underneath. But I want to keep those lines rough. Give some hairs here like I did before. Ears, hairs on top of the ears. Now, where the where the eyes are on the drawing below, you do this on the same position. You can draw this closed eyes like this, this way, and this way. So what you have now is. When you flip between your back drawing and your front drawing, you can see your wolf blinking. And then you can just trace the rest of the wolf and do your animation then. All right, so we have the closed eyes here and I'm just going to trace the rest of the body so we have the same drawing as before. Well, there you have it. Got your blinking wolf. Now if you like doing that, you can do other drawings. You can do the, the eyes half blinked and you can just start flipping your drawings. Or what you can do is if you have a little, um, a little block of paper, you can draw in the corner and then you can flip all your drawings and do your own little animations at home. Hi, I'm going to be drawing Maeve with you today. So Maeve is very round. Um, and usually when we draw the characters, we, we, we construct them first. So for starters, I'm going to draw a big circle for her head. Got a big sun shape. There you go. And don't worry about being too clean with the lines because she is it's very rough and uh, very free. So just uh, feel out the circle a bit and take your time. And then her body is uh, a jelly bean shape. So I'm gonna, gonna line that out under her head. And of course, we won't actually see that under her clothes, but just, just so we know where everything goes. And from that, draw the legs down. A little square feet. So she's a very round character, but um, the squarest part on her body is her feet. So I'm going to do that as a base so she has a good balance on the ground. There we go. Still rough. I'm going to put out her arms. 
I'm going to have them rest on her hip. There we go. Both sides. And then for her ears, they're like uh, a little heart shape separated on either side of her face. They're like mug, mug handles. So I'm going to line them out on both sides. And then she has a little, little cut in one of them. Just going to put that there. Um, yeah, and then I usually go in and I start with the eyes. So I'll do like a little line separating her face so I know where they go. And um, I'm going to draw her smiling. So her eyes are usually very round, but I'm going to curve them just a little bit. So there's room for that big, big smile. I'm going to put in the eye shape here. Round, I'm going to curve it right at the line that I drew. little hairs on top of her eye like that. I'm going to draw in the pupil, the iris. Go. I'm going to draw the other eye. I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to think of a very round shape. I'm going to cut it just around the line that I made. Draw in the iris, the pupil. And you can track with the other pupil, see if they're sort of on the same line, so it looks like she's focused and ready. Gonna draw in the lines at the top. And for her nose, it's also a little circle, but like a flatter circle. So her nostrils are an M on the circle, M for Maeve, and uh, I'm gonna put them also to touch, the, the lines are gonna stop where I did the line where on the same level of, as the eyes. Just like that. And then there's room for a big, big smile. There we go. We like to put it a little bit to one side so not everything is directly in the center of, of the drawing. And then she has really big teeth. She's a little wolf. I'm going to draw in the big things. There we go. And then for her neck and for her the top of her head, we actually use a very similar shape. It's like a little teardrop upside down, or a little water drop. So I'm going to put a line down here, and I'm going to do the same for her face indicate just where the lines go. There we go. Um, and then she has a, a sash that's quite high on her body. I'm going to do a line that's a bit above the half point of her, of her jelly bean body. I'm going to draw two lines. And have where they are tied come down. So one one line goes over and one is under. Just like that. And then of course we don't see her body so I'm going to draw her clothes on top. Like a little bell shape and it comes over and then her, her dress is torn a little bit. She's wild and free in the forest. I'm going to put in a little, little tear there at the bottom. Try the feet. Don't worry about being too clean, because uh, we'll see. I'll cover her feet in some lines, because she, <laughs> she's a little bit dirty feet. There we go. And then her arms. Put in a little sleeve here on the outline of the arm that I made and curve that, keep the roundness in her body and just curve the elbow. Her arms get a little bit thinner towards the body so I'm gonna make sure that the lines are not parallel but just curve in a little bit. Join the hand, 
Do the same with the other arm. Keep that roundness in there. Put the hand here as well. She's wearing these uh, cuffs and they're sort of at the, um, almost at the half point of the lower arm, but not exactly. So keep a little space and put them in there. There's a little V shape inside, both. Can add that in there. That's her body. She also um, is also wearing these very, very big round earrings. I'm gonna put them here. Just like that. I'll outline her, f her head a little bit more before I start my favorite part <laughs> of Maeve's design. Um, See, I colored in the feet a little bit. Her nose is actually also colored in a little bit, so we can just put some lines here as well. The center of her face. Okay, my favorite part is her her big hair. So don't be don't be too uh, don't hold back too much. Just make a big outline around her, just like as round as you can, but not um, not too circular that like, you put in a little little, sh little detail for the hair at the, at the point at the end here. But then it's just a big round circle. And very voluminous hair. Good to keep the lines a little extra loose on the hair. And then she has like three lines that go from the center of her, uh, the heart shape on her head, up beyond the, the outline of the hair, just like this. And then we have some lines that follow the, the shape to help hint at the volume that's inside. So we curve them around like this to follow the big big shape of the hair. There we go. Curves the other way on the other side. You can add a few extra lines on the outside to give it even more wildness if you want. And uh, that's Maeve. Hi, so I'm gonna draw Robin. And I have a model sheet here. This is what we use in animation to remind all the artists how the character is drawn and to help us all draw her in the same way. So I'm just gonna draw her in a simple pose and we'll talk about the shapes that she's made out of. So I have a line of action to start with. Now she's not doing anything so it's just a straight line but it gives me an idea of her height. Here's the bottom and the top of her and I guess about midway through is going to be her belt or a little bit higher than midway because she has very long legs. And basically Robin at the start of the movie is very based on squares and it really shows her inner personality is very uptight and very controlled by the town and the way that her dad sees the world and the way the people in the town see the world. So she's all made out of squares. So if we think about her hood, it's just like a diamond shape, like a square on its side. And her head fits inside. Now don't worry, we're gonna draw through and then we're gonna do the final line. So to start, we're just drawing based on simple shapes. And using simple shapes helps all the animators draw the same way. And it also helps us say something about the character. Later on, you're gonna see Maria drawing Maeve and Maeve is made out of mostly circles so in contrast Robin is made mostly out of squares and this is something you'll spot in most animation if you look at even a movie like Pixar like Up that isn't um, made with hand-drawn animation if you look at something like Up you'll notice that the two main characters one is a square and one is a circle so this is a trick that a lot of animators use but in hand-drawn animation, we have the extra advantage because we can make 
our drawings have a certain feeling to them by just how we draw them, by the lines we use. So you can see as I'm building her up, she's made up out of simple shapes. And even her legs, let's see, we have a big triangle shapes here, which are the sides of her coat when she's hunting. And they flap up and down when she's running. And then we have, she's got big kind of baggy trousers, but they also make a kind of rectangle shape. Her boots make a kind of rectangle shape. And yeah, have a look at your favorite cartoon characters, whether it's Bart Simpson or SpongeBob or Mickey Mouse, and have a think what are the simple shapes that they're made out of. SpongeBob's a pretty easy one. Mickey Mouse is pretty easy too. But just have a look at your favorite characters and see what kind of shape language the animators used to say something about the character. Sometimes it's really subtle and sometimes it's really obvious. But anyway, we just did a big triangle for her cape. And then we have a crossbow. Now there's no getting around it. Crossbow is pretty much a semicircle no matter what. There's the crossbow on her back. She's going hunting. Maybe we can give her a little quiver of arrows. She's carrying on the side of her. How is it attached? Cartoon magic. And now we get into her face. So you can see she's made out of simple shapes, like a big triangle for her cape, a big diamond for her hood. Her head is a kind of a square that we can round off. That's the, that's the hair on her head. Then we can find a center parting using our center line. That's where her hair parts. And now we can have a place around here, a two thirds upper face where we can put the top of her eyes. And her eyes are also basically squares modified squares. We round it off. We don't make them completely square, but they're based on a square. And then we have her nose, which is just a little tick like that. And she has a little overbite. A lot of fun designing this character. Based her a little bit on my wife when she was a little girl. That's another fun thing you can do if you're designing your own characters. You can look at people you know people you like or people you don't like if it's a villain and base the characters on those and that gives you a little bit extra personality for free because you base it on a real person you don't have to imagine what their personality is you can imagine your character as the person you know okay so that's our construction and that gives us the basic building blocks of our final drawing but we're not finished yet that's what we do to build up the, the character and we use all our lines as loosely as possible so that we don't interfere too much with um, the final drawing. Now we can go and make the final drawing. And what's nice about uh, hand-drawn animation is how we draw the lines can give us a little bit more information about our character. Tell us a little bit more about who they are. So let's see, we're going to use pen, not too thick. Yeah. Nice thin pen. And now we can start to make the final decisions. Maybe we draw an eye like this. Then we make another line to make her have a nice eyelash. So you can go as carefully as you like. I have to go a little bit faster than I like because we only have so much time. But you can take your time at this stage. And what's nice about using a construction layer on a piece of paper underneath, or if you use a very light, very light line to do with pencil and then do it with a darker line or a marker on top. That means if you make a mistake, you can just go back and you can always check using the construction layer if you've gone right or not. Okay, so now we've got our eyes and we used a little bit of a thicker line to show she has a bit of an eyelash. Now we can carefully follow the shape of her nose. And sometimes it's nice to put a little bit of a thicker line under the nose. We can give her a little shy smile and an overbite. And now we're starting to see Robin, aren't we? Okay, so when we trace the sides of her face, to come down in a point like that. She kind of has a long face that looks a little bit like a shield. And her ears are right beside. So you can always remember where the ears are if you imagine what if this character had to wear glasses. The glasses will fall off unless the ears are exactly beside the eyes. So that's a little trick I learned when I was younger about 
knowing where to place the eye as I was drawing. You can do a few extra lines of hairs that are a little bit stray. Now we can bring the rest of her hair in place and another part of her hair. So what used to be a hard square when we constructed it is now much softer because we're thinking about what are we drawing? We're drawing hair so we have to be a little bit softer. It's not made out of cardboard. So hair is kind of soft and it kind of bunches up. So we can think about that as we draw it. Another thing we start to do now is think about overlap. And when we construct it, we drew the whole shape, but now we want it to feel like the hood is in front. So we can put the hood, the first line of the hood on top like that, and the next one on top like that. And it looks like our head is kind of inside the hood just by using overlap, which is a really simple rule. That helps a lot when we're drawing hand-drawn two-dimensional characters to give them a little bit of 3D, makes them seem a little bit more believable. And this stage, if it was a comic book, would be called inking. In animation, we call it cleanup. But really, this is the most important stage in a lot of ways, because these are the lines that will end up on screen. So you can kind of draw loosely and sketchy when you're constructing your character and have a lot of fun. But when it comes to this stage, it's good to take your time and make decisions carefully. But enjoy it. Don't get too uptight. You won't have any fun. And what's nice about when you're drawing a character like Robin is you can use really hard lines and really definite control lines. But if you're drawing a character like Maeve or a wolf or somebody who's really wild and rough, you can kind of use a lot of scratchy lines to help show that they're kind of wild and a lot more free than poor Robin is when we first meet her. But if you watch carefully in the movie, you'll see in Wolf Walkers, you'll see that Robin starts off with tight lines like this, but slowly over the course of the movie, she changes, her personality starts to change and her worldview starts to change and the things she cares about starts to change. And so her lines start to change and she starts to become much scratchier and rougher. And that's something I really love about hand-drawn animation that's special that you can't do with a computer. So now I'm just carefully working my way through all the shapes that we drew earlier, making some final decisions. Every now and then, if you want, you can just check back underneath to make sure you haven't gone wrong. But basically, if you use a thin piece of paper like this, you can see pretty well what you're doing as you go along. The little triangles for feet, little squares for the buckles on her boots. Okay, so I'm trying to be careful, but I'm also trying to go fast. So you'll probably do a nicer drawing because you'll be going much slower and more carefully than me. But basically, that's our character Robin. And there's one final thing I like to do after I've done all the outlines with a nice thin line is go back and make some decisions at the end. And we usually use a thicker pen for that or a thicker pencil. And that way we can decide to put some weight in certain places. So we always try to make them look a little bit like they were carved out of wood, like a wood block print. And if you look at those old printings, they had a lot of different line thicknesses. And that allows us to do something a little bit wonky, but it makes the drawing have a little bit more character. So one thing you can do is add a little bit of extra line thickness on the underside. And it gives a sense that the light is above. And it's just a very slight feeling of weight as well, as if the weight is coming down from above. So this is called line quality. And this is a pretty wonky line quality here because I'm going fast, but you get the idea. And the more you look closely at your favorite comics or cartoons, you'll start to see that there's lots of little tricks in this stage that can be used to help give your character weight or certain emotions or certain feeling. And it's always fun to spot whenever you've been practicing drawing, 
you start to see more and more of the tricks that you're using in the characters that you're enjoying whether it's a cartoon or a comic or video game or anything like that okay so very quickly and very roughly there's Robin and if you have time you can start to bring colors in and start to color her in and make her come even more alive by adding colors but that's basically how we draw a cartoon character and with those basic tips you should be able to draw your own characters or the characters from Wolfwalkers or indeed characters from any cartoon that you like. Hope that was fun. Hello my name is Ross today we're going to draw um, a tree for your character Maeve or Wolf or Robin or whoever to, to stand in. Um, so first of all we're going to have a look at the size of our character whatever size you've drawn them um, and we're going to just make a, a little space for them to stand so just draw a little a little kind of hard uh, oval shape and maybe draw some grass and uh, debris, a couple of leaves or whatever around and that's kind of like your stage where your character is going to stand right so now you know the height of your character and where they're going to be and you can make a say a tree or something to frame the character so draw a big swoopy shape around like that and that'll help frame your character like that so once you have that then you can start filling in details you can draw the other side of the tree a big curve you can draw some roots in some big kind of circular roots and you can draw maybe a, a branch up at the top that goes in a curve like this and then you can start filling in a, a kind of a rough shape for all the leaves of the tree right so draw just some squiggles like that it doesn't have to be um, very precise or anything probably the rougher you draw it the better because the style of the wolf walkers forest is very rough so then that's your basic kind of composition there and then yeah put your character in to check again so that looks good so the important thing to remember then is the size of say leaves and things like that that if your character Maeve was going to pick up a leaf it has to be like the right size it can't be really really tiny or it can't be way way too big so draw a, draw a leaf say that you think that your character could pick up and hold and it would be, be believable and then that'll give you a sense of scale what to base all the other leaves off so once you have that leaf then you can just start drawing in lots of other leaves that look roughly the same and then you know that the size is going to be right so you can just draw them really really roughly try and get them all going in in one direction because then it'll be a nice kind of flow to the to the background that's one of the things that we did in wolf walkers we we concentrated on on flowy lines going through all of the shapes so we're just going to draw lots and lots of scribbly leaves in at the top all facing the same direction all kind of going in the same flow line they kind of look like love hearts but really they're kind of based on an oak leaf which is kind of like a shape like that it's kind of squiggly and sometimes it has a line through the middle so you can draw that in too if you want so we're going to do lots and lots of lots and lots of leaves all around and then in some places maybe where it's in shadow you can just do lots and lots and lots of squibbles until it's kind of darker than the rest you don't really need to draw leaves at this stage just scribbles is enough okay so we'll darken this bit over here too and um, that gives you a canopy then for your tree then you can concentrate on the bark next um, and one of the things that we had in wolf walkers trees is sometimes they have mushrooms bracket mushrooms growing up the the trunk of the tree so we'll just draw them in they're kind of like saucers or, or like dinner plates or something on the side of the tree like that it just gives a little bit of a variety to to the what do you call it the flora of the of the environment so just draw a couple of those in there like that now we're going to give the trunk of the tree a flow and I don't know if you ever go into the forest and sometimes you see a tree and it grows around in a kind of a curve you can see the bark twisting so we're going to do some bark lines that'll show a twist in the trunk of the tree 
And then once you have those rough lines in, then you can start adding in some detail. And the bark, we're going to make this uh, kind of an old tree, so it would have lots of gaps in the bark, and we just draw them in with big black kind of lines like that kind of dashed lines, because sometimes the bark of the tree is very kind of chunky and bitty. So we put in some dark lines around, and some bigger, maybe, black lines that, that help describe that flow. And again, you can put make one area much darker and leave one area a little bit lighter, and it kind of helps show that there's a light hitting the tree, and some part is in shadow and some part isn't. So we'll make the bits underneath the leaves dark, because they would cast a shadow on the trunk of the tree. And then we'll make the outline a little bit darker too. This is the time that maybe, if you wanted to, you could put in a little bird up in the tree as well. And then again, just check the size against your character to see that it's not going to be a bird that looks way, way too big, or a bird that's too small. So just put in a couple of little legs that are holding on to the branch of the tree and maybe give it a, a little belly that you could colour in later. And there you have a little bird in your tree too. So one of the things about the trees in Ireland and a lot of places is that they have ivy growing up around the, bran around the trunks of the trees. Ivy is everywhere in the forest here and you could start by maybe just doing one shape that could be your, your ivy, um, uh, what do you call it, kind of a uh, it's like a, a branch of ivy, I suppose. And then off that, you can do little ivy leaves. And ivy leaves usually have like three points to them. So it's kind of like half a star. And you can do lots of little ivy leaves coming off the, the main trunk of ivy. And again, you can, you can group them together so that on some parts there would be less leaves and some parts there would be a clump of leaves. And that makes it look a little bit more believable. So put in a clump of leaves here and maybe just a couple of leaves elsewhere. And that's your little bit of ivy growing up. And then the roots of this tree are going to be all kind of like little semicircles. And you can make some bigger and some smaller. And then you can shade again underneath to make it look like that there's little holes maybe for little mice or voles or shrews or anything to live in. And then continue the the root and behind Maeve. And here you can put in like some little like bits of grass or flowers. Something nice that you see in your garden or out on forest walks some flowers that are qu quite big and then other ones that are just little tiny ones. You can just do little circles for them almost. And then put in some vegetation around the, the base of the tree like that. And then on the ground, because it's autumn, do some leaves that have fallen off the ivy and fallen off the tree. Again, you can make them different shapes and different sizes and clump some of them together and then put others far apart. Put over, put some on the other side of Maeve. And some grass and little tiny flowers. You could even put in a little, um, a little mouse with a curly tail. some ears and a bit of hair again check your character on top you could put in a couple of little spiders or bugs on the branch or on the trunk of the tree you could even put a little spider on a web hanging down from the trunk of the tree all kinds of things that you see in your garden or in the forest to make it seem a little bit more interesting and varied and alive.
there you have your background. So then that leaves it open to color and you can use all kinds of colors. You can color the autumn leaves at the top orange. You can color the, the, um, the trunk of the tree brown with maybe some moss, so a little bit of green. And then you can color in all the flowers different colors. And, uh, and then hopefully when you put your character in on top and you color your character, you'll have like a nice environment for your character to sit in. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed that. Thanks very much. Welcome back. Um, so I hope some of you could follow that. I know we were going pretty fast, but we had to try and fit it all in into uh, 40 minutes. So um, we see lots of questions and lots of comments in the chat box. Uh, nice little conversations going on there. Thank you very much. And um, if anyone has any questions or if they even want to show their artwork to us, um, feel free to. I don't know if you can unmute yourself. Question, or... Ross. Ross, okay. we have a question from Gabby Mayorga, who says, how much are the animators part of the script process? Oh, good question. Uh, good question. The, the animator is the script is written before uh, we start on pre-production. So um, the animators are usually a good bit after the script is finished. Um, so Tom and myself and Will Collins, the script writer, would have written the script. And then after that, it goes to like, you know, concept art and visual development and all kinds of artwork. And, and then after that, it goes to storyboard. After that, it goes to rough animation. So the animators start um, a good bit after the script is finished. Seen some beautiful drawings. Wow. And exactly, I, could, I saw some people were working hard and I'm not surprised at some beautiful drawings. And I'm amazed how you could do them so quickly. We're following along with us and nice. So one more next question is from Stephanie Lynn, who asks, what was the thought process that led you to animate the pack of wolves like water? Oh, that's also a good question. Well, we, we were thinking about the contrast between the way the soldiers move. They move like clockwork because they're very stiff and uptight and they only see the world in a very rigid way. But the wolves we wanted to show were very fluid and organic and part of nature. And so everything about the forest, the wolves, the trees, everything has a lovely flow to it. So we said maybe we can make the wolves move like a big organic mass to show that they all um, are thinking as a one and all moving as one and, and acting as one rather than lots of little individuals like the army. So it was just to contrast them with the human army, you know. It's this one is particularly for Tom and Ross from Joseph. The question is, what was the aesthetic reason behind creating the environments in a very painterly style and the characters in a contrasting flat color style? The wolves and Maeve and, and Mal and even the forest animals like the birds and that were, were also done in a kind of a watercolor um, uh, coloring so that they fit together. And then all the people in the sound were done with very flat uh, printmaking style um, and the, the colors were offset to make it look like woodcut prints. And also the town was also colored like prints um, so that the townspeople fit with the with the town coloring and then also the forest animals and the wolf walkers fit with the forest. And you only see then when the townspeople go out into the forest that they kind of don't fit in there. And that's a kind of a, a way to show that the townspeople are somewhat removed from nature and they don't really fit in in the same way that the, the animals and the wolf walkers do. Christine Pardo is asking, what is the coloring process as well as transferring to, to whatever program you use? Well, the, um, the backgrounds are painted on a paper with watercolors and the line work is done on a separate page and then they're composited together, the line work and the painted background with Photoshop. And the characters are all drawn on um, Cintiqs for the most part, which is like an electronic drawing tablet. Some of you might have one. And that way we can draw the characters directly in um, onto the screen um, and combine them with the backgrounds in TV paint. Understood. And Cherry Davis is asking, how many animators worked on the film and did they each specialize on one character? Um, 80 maybe? 80 yeah. animators and our and and final line cleanup yeah, yeah, artists clean across off, yeah. across the studios yeah yeah and uh we know we, we all drew all characters i think some animators they they would be more um they would work better with uh, forest characters or one character or another so they would do more of one character but everybody got to do a little bit of everything 
So you had to draw the characters from the forest and the characters from the town. Everybody is holding up their pictures. I'm so impressed. There's some real talent there, yeah. young and old. Yeah, nice. I'm so sorry I can't kind of highlight you because there's so many people on screen and there's pages and pages of people, but everybody I can see, what? I love it. Wow. And I can't believe how much you got done. Some people did a beautiful background. What? That one has a background and, and Maeve. Maeve. Oh, That's cool. so great. So cool. Fantastic. I hope it's helpful, guys. And you know, over time, if you practice using these techniques, you'll find your own way to build up the character. But the simplest, the simplest thing to say is we use very simple shape language to build up the character. And if you're doing that, you can't go wrong. But yeah, everyone's everyone. I'm so impressed. Do we have, have time for a couple more questions, Tom and Ross? Yeah, oh, we have time. Yeah, oh, we're here. Great, great. So Raul Toledo has a great question. He um, is pointing out that the movie feels like it borrows a lot of themes and ideas from Secret of Kells. And he, he asks, what was the intentional or conscious decision or connection there? It was definitely a continuation. Ross was art director on Secret of Kells, and we both felt like we wanted to explore more themes visually and in terms of how we dealt with characters emotions characters arcs and all the ideas we had about nature and how people interact with nature so so many themes from secret of Kells just continued on into song of the sea and into wolf walkers and that's why we think of those three movies as a kind of very loose triptych where our trilogy where they kind of fit together and that's great. And yeah, the, the, it definitely is a clear trilogy. Thank you. Um, Patricia Swanson is asking or saying of a similar, she loves the flickering shapes of Gaelic iconology and symbols and rooms. Can you talk a little bit about these magical elements? Sure. I mean, it's something that has evolved with each movie. The first one, we looked mostly at the Book of Kells and the artwork in the Book of Kells from illuminated manuscripts, which, of course, were a continuation and were influenced by artists from all over the world, including the Vikings, but also, you know, North Africa, all over Europe. The known world all had an impact on how the Book of Kells looked. So it wasn't it was just that Ireland had become a kind of a, a safe place for a lot of this artwork to find a haven in the scriptoriums. But then for Song of the Sea and for Wolf Walkers, we looked back even further and we were looking at some megalithic carvings that you can find on rocks here in the British Isles and in Northern Europe. And uh, these carvings are quite mysterious because nobody knows for sure exactly what they mean, but they speak to an earlier time and an earlier way of seeing the world and maybe a pagan way of seeing the world. And so what we did in Wolf Walkers in particular is when we showed the Wolf Walkers den, their cave or the, or the rocks, in the forest nearby, we kind of show like layers of runes and layers of styles to show that these people have been part of the forest for such a long time. So you might see really old, ancient megalithic carvings overlaid with carvings that look a little bit more like something from the Book of Kells, overlaid with something that might look more like it came from uh, the 1600s when the movie was set. So we were just trying to show that this was a very ancient civilization that had been in Ireland all the way back into the mists of time. Love it. Um, Lucas S is asking, why was the town a bird's eye view when it was a flat surface? Well, we we wanted to show that the the people that the town was really like a cage for Robin, uh, like a maze. And um, if if we took all the perspective out, it became almost like a you know like a harder place to find a, an exit, you know. Um, and it also showed that the people that lived in the town had a very almost two dimensional view, like a closed world view. Um, you know, and we also showed, uh, tried to keep the camera looking down, not to show the sky so that when Robin is going through the town, it feels like the town is is completely over her and trapping her and there's no way out. Um, and one of the things that we used as visual reference for the town was the woodcuts from the 1600s, which had a very warped perspective in it. And like, you know, we're done with very aggressive kind of big black lines because they had to carve the print, um, the print out of wood. Um, and then to contrast that with the forest, it's very sketchy and loose. So really, we wanted to to show that the town and the mentality within the town was completely opposite to the to the wolf walkers and animals uh, worldview. 
Nicholas D'Alessandro here is asking, is there a possibility that all of Cartoon Saloon's movies will be available on a specific streaming service like Apple TV at some point soon? I think right now they're all available somewhere, um, but I don't know if there's any plans to pull them all together yet, but I think it's something that hopefully we can work on as the rights become available over time. Fantastic. And Kyle Fukumoto, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing any names, was asking, is the film a, letter, a love letter to Kill Kenny? Yes. <laughs> a love letter. What do you, what, the ladies aren't from Kill Kenny, so what did you guys right, What do you think? It, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it feels, feels a bit like a love letter to Kill Kenny, but also just to, to Ireland. And um, like it showcases the really beautiful nature, like that's something from someone who doesn't come from Ireland that stood very stood out to me a lot was like the forest and I feel like it captures that magic a lot that I felt coming from outside so. Um, and also if we look out the window here we can see the castle through the yeah, window. Yeah that's true. So uh, yeah. our studio um, has a balcony up on the roof and so we could look out every day when we were having our coffee at the rooftops that Robin would have been running across when she was a wolf. <laughs> Amazing. Sharon Simon is, um, you know, saying thank you. This is very fun and informative. She's asking, how does one join an anim animation team? Do you need to have a portfolio of drawings? And then what is the process? Yeah, depending on the department that you're applying for, you'll need a portfolio for that particular, um, let's say, discipline. So if you want to be an animator, usually you'd have a showreel of your animation to show. If you want to be a background artist, you'd probably have a portfolio of backgrounds and so on. Fantastic. Jorge Ignacio is asking what's next for Cartoon Saloon? Uh, that's easy. We're very busy. We, <laughs> even though everybody's working from home, we're in production of a new feature film based on Puff and Rock, which is our TV series for little kids from three to five years old. And we're also in production of a feature film um, with Nora Toomey directing that I believe Maria and Tatiana are working on right now yeah. called My Father's Dragon. Yeah, My Father's Dragon. It's, uh, yeah, it's going to look great. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mean to put That's you under pressure. Um, we also have a, ser a series that we're doing with Apple TV Plus, which is pretty epic. It's a big adventure series. Um, can't say too much about that yet, but I'm really excited for that. It's probably one of the biggest projects we've ever done. So there's a lot more to come from Cartoon Saloon. Fantastic. We're all excited. Okay, last question comes from Jay Auslander, who asks, did you design your own tattoos? I think that's for you, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's for me. No, no. I think I always um, start to dislike my own drawings after a while, because hopefully I'm getting better. So I um, either ask friends or I go to tattoo artists who I like their work and tell them a lot of them are based on old Irish carvings like you see in the background. So they start from those old carvings and then do what they want. Fantastic. Now, should we should we try this again where we have everybody hold up their pictures? Yes. I'm going to come a little closer. I must. Yeah, it's fantastic. I must. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, I love beautiful. somebody colored oh, Maeve, which is a great extra step in the time that you had oh someone put robin by the tree wow there's a full color mave and tree and some beautiful stuff wow everyone oh my gosh i love the rendering everyone kind of got into the spirit of the line quality yeah, what? Oh, so cool. that's an amazing <laughs> so much amazing work look at that mave i wonder i can't see your names unfortunately so i can't call it out but i just want to say Across the board, the stuff looks fantastic. I wonder, could people take a picture and, and upload them all somewhere? Yeah, else? yeah, yeah. We'd love to see them. Maybe we can organize that. Yeah, we can, we can definitely try and organize that. We, we'll try and send everybody an email who's here so that they can send one photo for you to look at. That would oh, be yeah. amazing. Or That'd Terry is suggesting everybody could post on Twitter and tag you on Twitter oh, if you're on Twitter. That'd be great. Yeah. That I'm always on Twitter. I'm a Twitter addict. So okay, so is it, it, is it Cartoon Twitter. Saloon? Who should they tweet? Oh, yeah. What's my Twitter handle? Uh, yeah, Cartoon, Saloon. Cartoon Saloon, yeah. You'll find Cartoon Saloon on Twitter. 
Okay, and, fantastic. Um, yeah, just tag so us. So some people are saying, if you have Twitter, I feel like that's a fast and an immediate way to reach Tom and Ross. You can tweet. If you don't have Twitter, some people are saying they're not on Twitter, then you can email the people you were organizing today with. So whoever emailed you about today, you can email them your picture. Yeah, and just send them to me. And, and write hashtag Wolfwalkers um whenever you post on twitter and that way yeah. i'll see it so yeah instagram, instagram. facebook yeah. twitter hashtag wolf walkers yeah please do thank you all i mean I'm, i really am delighted to see so many people tune in these are such strange times i'm sorry we were late starting and technology is tricky but isn't it amazing that we can see each other and share how how we work and everything across such a crazy amount of distance and everything it's brilliant we're it. thrilled you could join us today from Ireland. Thank you so much for taking the time to, to make that video of the drawing. It, it's so fantastic. And you've been so generous with your time here today. Thank you so much. Thank you all for coming. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed the movie. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Thank you, guys. Thank See you. Thank you. Bye. See you. Bye. Thank you.